Hello again, everyone, and welcome to The Crusher. I am very, very happy to welcome back an old friend, Mitch Silberman, who I know from the Jewish Republican Alliance. Uh, it's a great organization that I've been a part of for years uh, and have followed for years. Uh, they are in L.A., but they're also in Las Vegas and Nashville and in many other parts of the country. So, uh, Mitch, let's uh, let's begin with this. Tell me a little bit about uh, Jewish Republican Alliance, and then I want to talk to you uh, about your new home, and we can go from there. Well, Josh, it's uh, I am so honored and excited to be on your podcast again. So thanks for having me. Uh, the moment I met you, I knew we would be friends. I mean, people get us confused all the time. You know, we're similar height and everything. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, we founded Bruce, Bruce Krasick and I, my, my co-founder, we founded this organization, the Jewish Republican Alliance, in March of 2016, because at the time we wondered if we were the only Jewish Republicans in all of California. We just didn't know if there was anyone else. And lo and behold, we were, fortunately, we were wrong. There's a lot, there's quite a few. And it's really a grassroots organization. Uh, it exists to unite conservatives to take a stand, a positive stand for America and Israel. And one of the one of the true blessings of the organization, Josh, has been that um, maybe twenty five percent to a third of our members are not even Jewish. We realize that if you love America and you love Israel, this is your home. This is where you belong. And it's just a great way for people who share values to take a stand for our, our great country. Are, are not Jewish, really. I, you know, it's interesting. You yep. always welcomed, you always welcomed non-Jews, but I never had asked you. You know, what was the response to that? And I think that's awesome. I think that's tremendous. Well, here's the funny part: uh, <laughs> when I meet a Christian conservative, and they find out I'm a Jewish conservative, Josh, I swear this happens every time. They they look both ways, they lean forward, and they whisper, why are all Jews liberals? <laughs> they don't understand. So what we realize is that um, early on, some people would say, you know, I'd love to come to your organization or come to your events, but I'm not Jewish. And I thought, why does that matter? Like, it didn't occur to me that you'd be excluded from that. And so from the stage in front of a thousand people, we broadly, proudly stated it doesn't matter if you're Jewish, Christian, Catholic, Muslim, atheist, yeah. Democrat, independent, Republican. If you love America and you love Israel, you belong yeah. here. And so we're gathering all kinds of people that really love the Judeo-Christian values upon which our beloved country was founded. You know, when I, when I had John last time with Bruce, uh, I used your logo. And, and I'll tell you, I wish there was a way to integrate that into your logo. You know, uh, uh, you know, like you don't have to be Jewish, like around the outside or something like this. But it's interesting you say that because a lot of Christian conservatives, um, they'll ask that. And um, I, I've said to a lot of people, I think that the state of Israel would be in, in better hands with American Christian conservatives than it would be with about 70 percent of our, our fellow Jews in this country. But we're going to we're going to dig into that. So why don't you tell me, um, I, I understand that you recently uh, fled California uh, and landed in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the Jew your Jewish experience in Nashville, Tennessee versus uh, La La Land? Yes. Uh, you know, I spent 59 years in California. I never lived anywhere else, even to go to college. So packing up, moving to another state, uh, another time zone, the South, big change. But what I've learned, because I have, uh, first of all, Nashville has been thoroughly invaded by Californians. It's unreal. Um, and what I've learned, because I, I have other Jewish friends that have moved here, preceded me, and he told me this, which I'm about to share with you, Josh, and I said, interesting. And then it happened to me. It's true. When Christians here find out I'm Jewish, it's like, oh. <gasps> You're the chosen people. We pray for Israel every Sunday. They, we're like a rock star. It's unreal. And, you know, here's the, the there's many differences between L.A. And, and Nashville. But in Los Angeles, you you better safely assume that everyone you talk to is liberal and you better keep your mouth shut. 
just kind of the, the way to, it goes there. And that's fine. It's the way it was and probably still is. Here, it's the flip. It's the opposite. Just, it's safe to assume everyone you talk to is conservative. And if they're not, they keep their mouth shut. You know, But we're very kind and civil about it. So I, I have this high that I wear. I got this in yeah. Israel in 1985. I wear it every day. And ever since October 7th, Josh, I make sure it's out. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I didn't pay attention to it before. I never hit it. But now it's like, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, this is out. And I, I just, I will tell you, um, I, I can tell you so many instances where someone sees this, they don't know what it is because they're not Jewish. Right. And then they find out I'm Jewish and all of a sudden their face lights up and they tell me they pray every Sunday for Israel. Yeah. And well, it's unbelievable. You know, and one thing I find sad, and we'll dig into the issues out in the streets because they've gotten worse in the six months since we spoke. Uh, is that too many Jews are are hiding their high? Uh, un unfortunately, my chain broke a couple days ago, but I've been uh, displaying it, and I don't think we should ever uh, walk around with our hat in our hands. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's funny, Norman Pedoritz. I told you this on the last. You should find this book if you haven't read. Why are Jews liberals? By Norman Pedoritz, who right. founded Commentary Magazine. Yep. And it's just so baffling because you can lay out all the evidence and you still scratch your head and you wonder why. Tom Wolfe wrote uh, his finest book, A Man in Full. He has a whole thing about uh, about that, about uh, like a Southern, uh, like a Georgian, uh, a, a cracker, as he refers to him. And he's just shaking his head <laughs> as to how are all the Jewish people liberals? They don't, you know, like they don't live that way. You know what I mean? They don't, you know what I mean? So, well, it's, it's interesting. So uh, Nashville versus Los Angeles, there was a, um, just to let everybody know, uh, you know, the, the, the Jewish Republican Alliance, you should, you should look for it. Or if you're interested in starting a chapter, I'm sure Mitch would like, love to hear from you. If you uh, go to their website, you can give the Absolutely. website. And I'm sure if you want to start a chapter in your area, uh, they couldn't make it any easier for you. And um, uh, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Then we're going to roll into the crazy world we're living in. Yes. Yeah, so it's uh, the website is www.jewishrepublicanalliance.org. Um, we are in the midst, we're on the verge of releasing the new website. So what we have now is, is okay. What we're about to have is remarkable. And that's literally any, any day now. Uh, but you're right. We've had chapters spring up all over the country, as you mentioned, in different cities. And I think the most important thing is people want to know they're not alone. And especially in light of what I have October 7th, I really, Josh, I think October 7th is um, a litmus test for not only moral versus immoral thinking, but for some reason, October 7th has turned into um, an accentuator of, what you, of who you already are. And here's what I mean. If prior to October 7th, you didn't like Jews or Israel, well, you're probably on the left. And now for whatever reason, October 7th, the gloves are off and the ugliness is out there for all to see. However, if prior to October 7th, you liked Jews and you favored Israel, now there's even a bigger compulsion to take a stand for Israel. I'm seeing it. Like the, the Christians now and the in the Jews that are maybe center left, center right, they're really standing up for Israel. Like October 7th is really a line of delineation. And, and so there's potentially some good shifts that can t take place from that. I, I certainly hope so. You know, um, well, let's let's talk for a moment about this image. I saw an image recently. It's a meme that's online and it's it's a mm -hmm. bunch of Nazis uh, in Vienna, Austria in the late 1930s, and they're locking arms to prevent Jews from attending the university. Okay, this is years before the final solution, but it's also not one iota different than what's happening on campuses right now. I've got a kid at UC San Diego, and, and you know, I can't even imagine Jewish kids now, what, what, who, what the hell is, Mitch, what the hell is going on since the last time we spoke? This is insane. You want to stop J Jewish people's passage? You want to stop them from getting to where they need to go? And you think this is a legitimate part of protest? Um, there's a lot yeah. here I'll ask you to unpack, but we have academics with no spine, although I never expected them to have a spine. They allow for these encampments. There's no, in freedom of speech, it doesn't say pitch a tent. It says you're free to speak. And it doesn't say, it doesn't say you can stop people of any particular race. Mitch, this is getting worse and worse. 
and there's people getting punched. And, and I hate to say it, I think there's going to be people getting killed if, if, if the left gets what it wants. And this left is flexing its muscles. Well, boy, there's a lot to unpack there. You're right, Josh. So first of all, um, let me give you a little analogy that I think of. You know, I, I we love dogs. We have three dogs. They're very sweet. They're very kind. They may bark, but they they don't they don't bite. But if I owned a pit bull, for example, and it attacked you and hurt you, most likely I trained that dog to attack, right? On, on its own, not all dogs, but generally speaking, and now legally, I'd also be liable because I must have done something that this dog attacked and hurt you. These kids, in many ways, I know they're called kids, but they're young adults. These kids are like those pit bulls. They've been indoctrinated to hate Jews, to hate America, and to hate Israel. And now they've been turned loose. And, you know, the interesting thing is I read the Jewish journal still. To its credit, the Jewish journal is calling everything out the way we would. They leave out one word from their entire, uh, all, all of their columns. They leave out the word Democrat. And it really pains me because their assessment of what's going on is just as you and I would call it. It's terrible. It's awful. But what they don't realize is, gee, hmm, what party do you think these teachers were K through 12? What party do you think these professors, you know, what party do you think these protesters vote for? It, they, they leave that completely out. If it was guys with red MAGA hats doing it. Oh, yeah. No, it would yeah, be Trump's yeah, fault. The Republican yeah. Party's fault. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. uh, um, so but what I think is the reason they've been left rampant is, number one, I hate to say it, it's just Jews. You know, it's just Jews. That's For right. whatever reason, the Jew hatred is alive and well. And number two, these professors agree. So yeah. they're these cowardly uh, they're not putting yeah. anything, they're putting their foot down. It's the long march through the institutions, and it's been successful. Yes. It's fifty. It's at yeah. least fifty years. Uh, you know, it's fifty years of marching through uh, the the universities. And you know, as I yep. said, you know, I had you should listen to, uh, listen to this one podcast I did. There was a uh, a hockey player, you know, I was in hockey. I worked in the NHL for almost 20 years. There's a hockey player named Colby Cohen who played. He okay. had a cup of coffee in the NHL. He played a lot of minor pro. And we were talking. He's about 20-some years younger than us. And he says, well, you know, there's, you know, I'm appalled by all this, but there's bad people on the right, too. And I said, Colby, <laughs> here, here's the difference, Colby. I said, you know, and tell me if you agree. The, the people on the right are not educating our kids. You know what I'm saying? If there's some fr fringe loon on the right, okay, that's fine. I'll accept it. This is all on the left. And these people are all educating the kids. You know, like I, I – people often – like they talk about, okay, I, I don't like what comes out of the mouth of Marjorie Taylor Greene, okay? But. No one like her is educating your kids. There are thousands, tens of thousands of people just like AOC, just like Rashida Tlaib, just like Ilan Omar, educating your kids. That is a brilliant observation, Josh. I, I, I mean, it's obvious, but it's brilliant. You're right. And the other thing we, that, that you brought up that really rubbed me the wrong way is the equivocating. Yeah. Well, you know, there's there's bad people on both sides. Like, yeah. okay, fine. We can agree on that. But let me tell you something. The bad people on the right have no power. They're neutral. Right. The bad people on the left are firmly in charge of today's Democrat Party. And as you said, they're the ones educating our kids. If there's a right-wing professor, they keep to themselves. They are so in the minority. So I, I love that point. It's a great point. And I hope Colby heard you loud and clear. Oh, no, that. he did. And he agreed. He agreed. Stop. He said, you're right. You know, you're right. I mean, it, it, that's who's educating your kids. And that's it. It, it, it makes me nuts. So let's let's talk. Um, let's talk about some uh, interesting public figures. Um, the most interesting of all is the man running the country. And I, I'll just say flat out, Mitch, I look at Joe Biden. Uh, this is a disaster. And I, I see a man who just to give you a, a, a concrete example, on Holocaust Remembrance Day, he gets up, he makes a speech that people appreciate. You know, it's a, okay, great. 
Great. Okay. You made a great speech. You're very sympathetic to the Jews. Within like 24 hours, he's back throwing uh, bouquets at the, the Hamas left. And, and, and he's, he's telling Israel to stop. Jew, by the way, Jews are the only ones who can't defend themselves. Everybody else is encouraged to, to do it, it, this. He is playing. What I'm getting at here is this man is playing both sides, openly playing both sides when we need no equivocation. It's Nazis versus America. It's Hamas versus Israel. It's time to pick a goddamn side. And what was bothering me, Mitch, is do the Jewish people in this country, do they get their being played? Do they get this duplicity? Are they okay going along with this, this duplicity? Well, boy, there's a lot there. I... But, you know, first of all, what does it say about you that you're actively courting people that are siding with today's Nazis? OK, that's that's the first thing. And the other thing I back up to when when people start equivocating or saying, well, Israel, what do you expect them to do? Is it wrong? I just kind of go, hold on, hold on. I just want to make sure I'm clear. You're going with the people that beheaded babies, raped women and murdered families. That's well, you know, no, no, no. no. I want to make sure I'm clear. What you said was you're picked. You picked a side. You're going with a side that beheads babies, rapes women, and murders families. Got it. Just so I just want to make sure that's what I heard you say. Put them on the defensive. And as for Biden, he is no friend to Israel. He gives empty lip service, and then he no. threatens to withhold uh, withhold ammunition. Uh, he tells them how to fight a war. Lately, I'm sure you heard this. Um, if you don't go into Rafah, we'll share our intel with you. Wait a minute. We're allies. You have intel that could help Israel, and you're holding it back. He is not. The, the thing that drives me crazy is the left wing media says that he's so pro Israel, which is angering his base. And I'm like, how on earth is he pro Israel? Please explain to me with the, with proof and examples that he is pro Israel. He is not. His 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 administration is probably the most anti Israel administration maybe ever. Oh yeah, and well, but this is the pendulum shift here, Mitch. This is really where you see that this has swung so far from the days of the JFK, or quite honestly, no matter what you think of him, Bill Clinton was in the center. Okay, I'm sorry. Yep. He was a centrist. He he openly said Yasser Arafat was the reason this all failed. He he was a Democrat. Okay. Love him or hate him, he was a Democrat. Now look how far they are to the left where if you if like if you we talk about equivocation, if you're one to equivocate, you're too pro Israel. If you equivocate so let's talk about um, the big, bad, evil Donald Trump, who uh, said um, was something to the effect of uh, if Jews vote for Joe Biden, they're, they're crazy. He's right. Mitch, he's right. He's, he's, he's right. What's offensive? He's right. You're crazy. I mean, you know, wake up. That we, we don't need how many wake up calls. You have people being decapitated, people, babies being set on fire. You need another wake-up call? So uh, Trump is right. If I mean, this is stark. This is stark and clear. Biden or Trump? It's, 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 yep. There's no gray here. Well, President Trump has been right on just about everything. I don't care what anyone says. He just <laughs> has been. Um, I was very blessed. I was at two White House Hanukkah parties under President Trump, and I was on the White House lawn when he signed the Abraham Accords. This is the most pro-Jewish, pro-Israel president this country has ever had. His daughter is an Orthodox Jew. His grandchildren are Jewish. He he moved the embassy. I mean, what more proof do you want? He he. Now, you asked earlier about are the Jews know they're being played? Here's the thing: many Jews, as you know, they've given up their self-identity. They gave up Judaism for leftism. That's right. And they were born Jewish, and that's it. So that's that, right. You know. What Biden's doing is probably fine by them or not enough to help those poor Palestinians. But if Judaism and Israel are important to you, I am seeing a little bit of a shift where people are saying, wait a minute, look at all this anti-Semitism and it's all coming from the Democratic Party. So they're having this cognitive dissonance. So it is waking some of them up. Yeah, indeed. All right. So then let's talk about uh, Chuck Schumer. Um, I mean, has he... Has he completely bought into this? He seems to be going along with this abandonment 
of Israel at a time when they need victory. It's like Douglas Murray said, uh, and I, I, his reporting has been phenomenal. But Douglas Murray said, you don't put out 80% of a fire. They, they have to win. Yes. So where's Chuck Schumer? Well, right. Well, Chucky Schmucky, as Mark Levin calls him, um, he, he's abandoned Israel. When he made that speech that Netanyahu has to go, um, he, he and those the, the people on the left, I know, Josh, you understand this, but what people have to realize is that those, the people on the left, I don't mean people who just vote Democrat, people on the left, they crave power like you and I crave water or food. So Chuck is scared of being outflanked by Aach, as Mark Levin calls her, AOC. And what, no matter what his personal feelings are in Israel or Judaism, it doesn't matter. He He's clearly aligning himself with the hard left because he knows that's where the power is and that's where the future is. And, uh, you know, the hell with Israel. That That's that's Chuck Schumer's uh approach right now as far as I'm concerned. Look, look, any, I mean, and I wish, I wish someone would come along and say this. You just put, put out an ad, I don't even, newspapers, I guess they don't even exist. Put out some kind of ad that says, do you honestly think people were decapitated because they voted for Netanyahu? Do you think this woman was raped because she voted for Netanyahu? Okay. Netanyahu said in his autobiography repeatedly, they've been trying to tear me down, going back to Clinton, he talks about John Kerry saying things to him at like Rabin's funeral. Like, if you want to be remembered like Rabin, you better play along. And Obama wanted to get rid of him, and they've all wanted to get rid of him. And and you know, it, 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 just go talk to some Israelis, man. These the liberal Israelis, they get it too. They, these are missiles falling on their heads. Their children are growing up with bomb shelters in their homes. This is when they say it's an existential struggle, Mitch. It's an existential struggle. You can wave your finger at Israel from seven thousand miles away. It, it doesn't mean shit. They, they're right there. <laughs> what don't you get? Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think for um, you know, we, we've grown up in such a protected world of society that they can't conceive that young people could be at a, at a uh, concert and all of a sudden, like, wait a minute. Are those paragliders? Like, no. Nah, what? Do you, what? Is, why are there a bunch of guys in the air? Oh my God, they're gunning us down. Like, it's it's inconceivable. You're thinking like, I, I can't believe that really happened. Well, it did. And by the way, if you don't believe it, watch the freaking video. I can't watch the video. It, it would be uh, too much for me. Oh, well, speaking of video, Real. let me let me jump in. I th I may have asked you this six months ago. Um, I'm of the opinion that Israel needs to no more selective audiences. They need to put these videos out there. They got to show these atrocities, Mitch. Maybe you disagree. I say you got people forgot this within a week. They forgot. Well, <laughs> within a day, you already had people lining up against Israel. October 7th, horrible. October 8th, I don't know. I think the Jews, it was their fault. Unbelievable. Show the videos, yes or no? I would say, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. Let those who want to see it see the truth. And, and you know what? As far as Rafa goes, look, they, they already hate you. They're going to hate you if you go in. They're going to hate you if you don't go in. If, if Israel dried up and died tomorrow, they, the the Muslim Brotherhood would, would find all the Jews and kill them if they could. So, well, you know, if they hate you anyway, just go and do what you have to do. And, you know, look, another thing that I would put in the newspaper is, and I wrote a piece called One Man's Hilton is Another Man's Terror Tunnel. I put it on Substack. Somebody please tell me why, after 18 years of running the place, why doesn't Gaza look like Dubai? Why doesn't it look like Tel Aviv? Why doesn't it even look like Cleveland? I mean, you know, you know, you know, it, it, you, you're digging tunnels. This is a choice. It, this is to me, Mitch. It's liberal racism 101. It's the low. It's the liber, It's the racism of low expectations 101. To expect absolutely nothing. And and I'll finish with this and you can talk. The Arab people excel in science, technology, mathematics, every field of study. And, and in all kinds of Arab countries, you see industriousness, you see commerce, you see universities. Well, if Gaza looks the way it looks, it's a choice, Mitch. 
Yes, it is a choice. And it's very telling that their neighbors, not one of the neighboring countries will welcome them in. Not one. They haven't since 1948. And, they um, that's right. And um, the, the other thing that there's, Dennis Prager wrote an article about this recently, but there was a historical blood libel that came about, I don't know, in the mid, I don't know, the 1400s, 1500s, where they said that Jews were killing Christian babies and using their blood to make matzah, a blood libel. Yeah. We have another blood libel going on now. That They banty this word genocide. And I, I have to share something with you. It's kind of interesting. Um, right after October 7th, I went to the CEO of the uh, Jewish Federation of Greater Nashville. Young guy who's a rabbi. He's the CEO. And I have to tell you, in the eight years we've had um, JRA speakers, not many of use cuss words. It's just not the right format for our right. So I have the CEO, a rabbi of the of the Nashville uh, you know, Jewish Federation. He brought out statistics about the so-called genocide. And this guy was dropping F-bombs and cussing. And I couldn't believe it because he was so passionate, even though I know he was probably a liberal. He was so passionate on our side, Josh, that it is a blood libel to say. He said, if we're doing genocide, we are the worst genociders in the history of the world. Because 50 years ago, there, I'm going to make up numbers. 50 years ago, there were 2 million Palestinians, and now there's 18 million, something like that. It's like we we suck at genocide if that's what you think we're doing. RFK said that. RFK Jr. said that. You know, well, Sirhan Sirhan was a Palestinian, so he has a pretty good memory of what this is all about. What his, you know, <laughs> yeah. what Price's father paid. Although I I know he doesn't think that Sirhan Sirhan actually was the one that that killed his father. Nonetheless, yeah, he thinks really? it was somebody else's bullet. But whatever. But recently they asked RFK Jr. about that. He said there were 750,000 Palestinians in 1948. Now there's 7 million. Where's the genocide? So it's interesting, yeah. you know, that he, you know, he knows this. So, you know, it's it's a whole thing. By the way, I want to give a plug. I don't know if you've heard of this woman. Maybe she should speak uh, for one of your chapters. I, I God, I hope she wins. I just threw 25 bucks to Tina Forte. I want to give her a shout out. She's running against AOC. And uh, pr pray to God, Mitch, pray to the Lord above that Tina Forte from the Bronx can defeat AOC. I, I pray. I, I pray. This AOC. That would be great. Oh, my God. AOC educating my kids. You know, it's interesting, Mitch, since the last time we spoke, you know, everybody was kind of laughing at John Fetterman, you know, uh, because he's always yeah. wearing a hoodie. And it's interesting when he, with the illnesses he's cool. been through, I, like, I kind of get it. I was laughing at John Fetterman. I want to write him an apology because it, it, it this, it, you see the last Democrat, is it like just him and Manchin? Are those the last two? Because Fetterman's like, this is crazy. We got to support Israel. And Fetterman's been great. Is he the last Democrat, Mitch? You should have him speak at one I, of your I, events. Oh my God. He, I, you were so right, Josh. He is shocking the heck out of me. I cannot believe. I mean, he's walking in front of these protesters, waving the Israeli flag, draping himself with the Israeli flag. I mean, it's like, uh, I don't care what you have to say. Go home. Leave Good me for alone. you, man. Force on the side of Israel. It's like, wow. Blows me away. Yeah, it, it does. So, so Mitch, um, you know, listen, I could go on about these rosy topics uh, affecting the Jewish people. <laughs> I could talk for another three hours because uh, between academia and, and what's coming next and what's going to happen at the convention and you know we could talk about the money i know some of this is coming from soros or by the way the ford foundation and god knows who else is behind all this um but anything else you want to wrap up with uh before we come off this topic i wanted to talk to you about something else uh no i just think that we have an opportunity in front of us um november 5th you know We've been hearing forever. This is the most important election of our lifetime. It may be the last election of our lifetime in, in, in these free United States. But I would encourage anyone that has friends that are center left, not far left. Far left, forget it. There's yeah. no point. Yeah. But if they're center left, you know, have the conversation. Just say, you know, are are you are you hurt? Or does it, especially if they're Jewish, does it bother you the way that the Democratic Party? is treating Israel? Does it bother you the way that students and professors who are all Democrats are treating Jewish students? Like, ask it that way versus being a, you know, it's easy for you and I to attack and say, this is your party and people that you vote for are doing this. And that's not going to get you anywhere. So just ask intelligent, gentle questions about, do you see what's going on 
with the party you align with, the party you vote for, and how they're treating Jews in Israel and hear what they have to say. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, there's a couple other things. I mean, like, just, just you can just run down a quick checklist. Um, what's the price of gas? How's the border working out for you? Uh, and, and who had a better plan? Um, you, you know, you don't have to sit down and go. You don't have to be buddies with Donald Trump. OK, it's kind of like if you're an actor in Hollywood. I know you have some experience with this, but if you're an actor in Hollywood. Like, I need my agent to be an asshole. Do you follow what I'm saying to you, Mitch? I don't, I don't care if he's an asshole. Yes. I need him to be an asshole. He's going to go up against the moguls of Hollywood. I need someone to go talk to Kim Jong-un, okay? I need someone strong. And, and I'm sorry if Trump's personality, if you think it sucks, that's fine. But, you know, how, how much was gas? How much was food? Why don't we have a Keystone Pipeline? The border is a, is a complete nightmare. Mitch, let's talk about that real quick, and then I want to do a new segment that I'm rolling out this week. Um, tell me your thoughts about the border, because, you know, I, I'm just going to say I, 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 I cannot believe that this disaster has been allowed to go on, and God forbid it goes on another four years. Well, the, the border, is, there is no border. And I will tell you um, something very telling. I have a, a very dear friend who votes like we do, but he's not he's not into politics like we are. So he's not as up to date. I mean, he's aware, but he's not into it like we are. And I told him a few months ago that not only is the Biden administration suing Texas for protecting their own border, they actually were cutting the wire out of the way so illegals could come in. And he said, oh, come on, come on. I said, here's the video. So it was shocking to him, a pretty informed guy. This is an invasion. When you have a military age men coming over and our own government aiding and abetting them, it's 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 a, and and there's going to be something maybe worse than nine eleven. Than I pray not. It's impeachable, Mitch. Of course it is. You're supposed to defend the boy. And you know, by the way, Mitch, I you know you're right. You could have terrorists. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it for a second. But to me, Mitch, you lived out here. The emergency rooms, okay, full, full of illegals. That's their healthcare clinic. The, the schools, we've got to put them in our schools. All your services, every, everything, your housing. You go into you go into streets in, in, in the valley out here. You, you can look at, there's like nine people living in the garage. The, these people need services. But the, And then like, we, in California, thank God you moved. They, they're giving... <laughs> free health care to illegals. This is insanity. Plus, by the way, before Biden got elected, there was estimates of up to 20 million already in the country illegally. And 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 to me, yep. Mitch, you know, it's it's nice, to, you know, look, great idea. You sent them to New York, but New York is a big crazy city. Send them, I'm gonna say this, send them to Gross Point, Michigan, Shaker Heights, Ohio, Amherst, New York, Northbrook, Illinois. Send them to Hilton Head, South Carolina. Send them, send them to Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Send them to every How about suburb. Martha's Vineyard? What's that? What's that? How about Martha's Vineyard? Send, send another thousand Martha's every week. Vineyard. Send them to Carly Simon's house every week. Send them to Obama's yard every week. And people think I'm joking. This is this is this is insane. And and so and dangerous. No, it is. It's it's extremely yes. dangerous. So, uh, Mitch, we're going to do to 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 lighten the mood a little bit here. We're going to start with a, a new. <laughs> we're going to start with a new segment. Uh, it's called tribute to stupidity. And here we go. Tribute to stupidity. <laughs> tribute to stupidity. <laughs> All right. Very good. Very good. Well, with that in, in, impressive uh, jingle intro, I'm going to start with my own tribute to stupidity, and then I'm going to let Mitch have at it. Um, we were just talking about the border, so I'm going to give my uh, tribute to stupidity this week on The Crusher is for Mayor Eric Adams of New York. He says that migrants are excellent swimmers and should be lifeguards. He says, you know, 
We have a large body of people who are in our city, in our country, that are excellent swimmers. And at the same time, we need lifeguards. And the only obstacle is we don't give them the right to work to become a lifeguard. So there's my tribute to stupidity for this week, uh, completely ignoring the fact that people are in the country illegally, says they could be great lifeguards. So I guess we got 10 million new lifeguards. Um, that's my tribute to stupidity for this week, Mitch. Have you got yeah, Josh, a tribute? Can you imagine if a white guy? What's that? Imagine a white guy saying that, how he'd be oh, skewered. My, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Now, um, now coming up right now is our next tribute to stupidity brought to you by Mitch Silberman. Let's get at it. <laughs> tribute to stupidity. <laughs> I, I love that audio, Josh. Thank so you. this is something I put under the heading of little things make a big difference. So the left wants to put distinctions. They want they want to get rid of distinctions, right? There's no difference between a man or a woman or good or evil right. or you name it, right? So years ago, as you know, I was a child actor. Um, I still read up on what's going on in Hollywood. And I notice that they no longer have, like at the Oscars, for example, there's no longer best actor and best actress. Did you know that? It's best actor in a female role, best actor in a male role. Um, and then even in the newspaper every day, it lists famous people's birthdays. So it says actor Tom Hanks is whatever. Yeah. Actor Meryl Streep is whatever, right? It's just, and it drove me crazy, but whatever. That's that's the new liberal thing. So here's the, here's the, here's the tribute to stupidity. You ready for this one? What's that guy's name, uh, the Bud Light schmuck that... Uh, that caught the guy, the guy who pretends he's a woman. Oh, um, Dylan, you know, the, Dylan, the, I can't believe we're both. First Dylan, yeah, I'm going to bite in moment. Dylan. Is it Dylan? Something? Oh, Dylan Mulvaney. That's there it. Dylan Mulvaney. Yeah, Dylan, yeah. Mulvaney. Dylan Mulvaney. Are yeah. you ready for this? Yeah. So I'm reading the paper and it says, um, some organization recognized 30 under 30 for most, you know, influential, whatever. And one of them was actress Dylan Mulvaney. And I'm like, actress? The guy who's a dude, you're calling an actress, but real females are called actors? <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Very good. Well, listen, that is creme de la stupid, Mitch. And uh, and I appreciate your contribution. Creme de la stupid. To, I can appreciate your contribution to tribute to stupidity. And uh, I appreciate everything you do with uh, Jewish Republican Alliance. Um, you know, you've had, you guys have had great speakers. Are Larry Elder, Alan Dershowitz, Dennis Prager. Ben Shapiro, you know, I was one of the first people, first, one of his earliest interviews was me back in 2012 was Ben Shapiro. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But Fantastic. Look what he's become. Look what he's become. But, you know, listen, yeah. I, uh, you know, Mitch, look what I love about you uh, and Bruce uh, Karasik is you, you put your neck on the line uh, and it's, we live in a day and age where, you know, people are afraid to, to put themselves out there. Um, I, I welcome being canceled. I don't care. I don't care at all. Uh, I have to live with myself. And, and so uh, I applaud you and your courage. And, uh, and especially also, folks, remember, um, you don't have to be Jewish to be a part of a Jewish Republican Alliance. Just uh, seek them out. So, Mitch, thank you very much for uh, appearing on The Crusher today. Truly an honor, Josh. Thank you. All right.